Why Citizen Ghana Movement? I'll say this now. Some of us thought we needed to make a strong statement about Dumso. We needed to force the government to do more. I had been on Joy FM for over a year with Dr. Roku Bove when those things started. And I remember clearly when they started, the analysis was that the government needed to find emergency power because the cost of not having power was too much. And emergency power being expensive should not be the ultimate. After that, we should now work towards solving the problem properly. The government sat down for two, three years and didn't find emergency power. Two, three years down the line, now they say they are going to bring emergency power. And it was going to cost us an arm and a leg. Everything was all over the place. And even that was funny. I, I, we don't have time to go into all the things, but clearly they were mismanaging the problem. And Dumsong went from bad to worse. There were people who were dying. And you remember the person that you know we used as the front, Yvonne Nelson. Her mother was going blind. You know, I could tell you story after story after story. It was just a terrible mess. So in Occupy Ghana, a number of us said we needed to do something to force the government to take Dumso seriously and do something definite about Dumso. That is what broke us up. Many so, of the members mm -hmm. said no, they were not in for another um, demonstration. And Including Nisan Kuma? You know, I prefer not to use names. Okay. But clearly there was a split. That's one of the main things. They were not in favor of the continued street action. They wanted us to do a number of other things, some of which we were okay with, but some of us said, this is why we formed this thing. When it comes to talking, I talk more than anybody. When it comes to argue, we argue. So this is where you need to put your skin on the line and show that you're serious about what you're doing. So one group preferred a more diplomatic approach to things, as in issuing press releases and the like. Yes. And then another section felt that you needed more boots on the ground. We needed boots on the ground to make this, you know, more serious. Because again, if it comes to Imani, there's no debate we are afraid of. Okay, so now this is what the new thing is. What we have to do. And the important point is, we were not a hired crowd. You have lawyers and engineers and doctors, professors from the street. That was a huge message, and you needed to do that to send that message to the people in power. But well, that was one problem. The other problem had to do with what we think was too much politicization of you know the whole idea there were people from different places we were all anti bad governance i'm choosing my words well we were all against the bad governance we were experiencing okay none of us had a personal problem per se with president Jamama. no i personally don't have a problem with him we were anti-bad governance. But in effect, we were anti-government. That did not mean we were doing MPP's bidding. We knew clearly that what we were doing was going to inure to the benefit of the MPP. And many of us were sympathetic to the MPP. And we had a right to be. But we made a conscious decision that we're going to make this thing apolitical. It was going to be a tool for any politicians, you know, us. And the interesting thing was that many MPP people loved that. Many MPP people who were fighting the government as MPP people loved the fact that now there was another fight which was not necessarily a fight for power per se. It was not an MPP fight, but it was a credible fight in the name of Ghana. 